Hello people of YouTube, welcome to my living room and to episode number 30 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on the internet, mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Knits. Welcome if you are a new viewer and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to have you with me. Um, this episode will be mainly about knitting, but there's a tiny bit of sewing as well. I, uh, well, I had several weeks, more than I originally intended, to finish a lot of projects since the last episode. So I will show them to you. Um, I'm taking advantage of the light today because we've had several days in the last weeks where basically it was night at, at one in the afternoon. <laughs> Today's a little better, but not that much, so I should get on with it. Let's uh, grab your whip, grab your drink and um, let's go. I want to apologize if the light keeps changing. It's just how it is today. So yeah, I hope it stays fine, but I can't promise anything, sorry. So I will start with, um, with my sewing project which was actually already made last time I recorded a podcast, but for whatever reason, I didn't show it to you. It's this small pouch, which I made using a kit by Luli, well, by Lee, from the Luli podcast and the Luli Etsy shop. So this pouch basically folds itself and closes with a small magnetic button. There. I I normally close it easier than that, but just when I'm filming, I can't manage. Anyway, so I bought the kit in her shop and I received the, the outer fabric, the inner fabric, the, the interfacing, and all the instructions and pattern for making the pouch itself. It was really easy, no problem at all. The only thing is, I mixed things up at some point and I ended up with the <laughs> the male part of the magnetic button on top here, which is completely useless. But I um, I managed to um, to clean up the mess and it's not visible at all that, that I got it wrong the first time. It's really, really convenient. I put a lot of sewing notions in there, like um, my measuring tape. I have a small box with uh, stitch markers and stuff, a pair of scissors pencil and an eraser cable cable needle yeah stuff like that it's it holds quite a lot actually given its small size i already have plans for more of it since i want well, now that i have the pattern i can make more i already have made one more to offer at christmas and uh, i was really really super satisfied with it it came fast the fabric is just right for for the project so i'm happy with my purchase you can get the kit and the inst instructions instructions on their own in um, in the Luli Etsy shop. I will put a note in the in the, the, the show notes so that uh, you can find it directly and not have to search for it. She well, I actually saw it first that pouch at EYF last year because she was um, preparing the pattern and getting stuff ready and having it tested. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. So when I saw that she was selling them now, I had to get one for myself. That's the only thing I finished sewing. I have a project, I was about to say on the machine, but uh, I couldn't finish it directly to dress and I just have um, hems to make on the sleeves and on the and on the on the skirt part on the lower part but I couldn't finish it directly and I've just been too lazy to take out everything to finish it but since it's not really seasonal and I can't really wear it right now I don't think it makes a big difference if it waits one or two more weeks before it's finished. Uh, we had plans to go to the to a sunny area around Christmas and New Year, but they uh, we had to abandon these plans and we will be staying in Paris, which is definitely not the season for, well, the, play, the right place for wearing sleeveless uh, short-ish dresses in December. Despite the, the mild temperatures we've had lately, it's not going to work. Today I'm drinking spiced apple juice. It's just basic apple juice, which I warm up in a pan and I add uh, spices, same kind as in mulled wine, for example. I, I thought it was a bit early for mulled wine. 
I will wait until the end of the afternoon for that. But that's basically something you can find very easily on, on German Christmas markets, for example. Um, either apple juice or what they call Kinderpunsch, which is basically the alcohol-free version of malt wine. And I'm drinking it in one of my Christmas market cups, which I got in Germany. You, um, you have a... what's the word for it, actually? Basically, you pay for the cup and you get the, the, the money back you know, if you return it when you're done. But you can also keep it. So when they're pretty, we keep them. We have a small collection of, of uh, Christmas market cups. They are just the right size for a, a serving of Glühwein, of Maldwein. Concerning knitting, I have four projects to show you. Um, technically, it was five, but one of them has been offered already. So I will just mention it. The first object is uh, the Together Shawl by Pia Camabon, which I was working on last time. I've been able to wear it quite a lot lately since I finished it. It's a um, simple, simple shape, a triangular shawl with um, bubbles or knobs all around. And uh, I really like it. So it's, it's nothing overly complicated. You can really um, memorize the, the pattern easily. I, I, I used it as a, as a social project. Basically, I knit, I knit it all the time on the bus at, at midnight. I was about to say at the office, but I wasn't working, so no. But <laughs> it was very easy. The only thing is that the bubbles take a hell of a long time to make. So in the end, it was getting long. Not boring because it's it's not because it's repetitive that it's boring, not at all, but it was long. Like, I remember one knit night in particular where I basically did one, maybe one and a quarter of a row of, of bubbles, which is uh, not that much in three hours. <laughs> I used um, Le Petit Lamps Wool yarn by, well, it's wool, by, um, by Biche Buche, which I bought at the Tricot Market in October. They were also at the festival, which I attended this week, which allowed me to buy some more of their yarn, which was nice. Anyway, it's warm, but it's not too heavy. That's what that's exactly what I wanted. It's it's lightweight, but it's still very warm. So I can wear it this way. That's how I wear it most or a bit more, well, a bit less tight. And um, and yeah, it's just perfect because the problem in Paris is that as soon as you, well, it might be very cold outside, but as soon as you get on the bus or in the subway, or, and I assume that's the same in any um, city with a public transport <laughs> system, but it's super hot and you're just boiling. And when I don't want to remove everything, I can just open the neck a bit and it's fine. But anyway, I find it, I find it very soft. I have some friends who reacted when I showed them with uh, something along the line of it feels like a, the the scrapping side of a, of a sponge, if you see what I mean. I, I, I disagree with them. It's not merino, it's not cashmere or anything, but it is soft and it's really, really not scratchy. Um, not at all. That's my first finished object. The second one, uh, I will go in chronological order no but the second one is a hat well actually the next three are hats but this one is the T spelled T-H-Y um, thigh maybe the, I don't know um, hat by Marie Amélie Designs what can I say about it it's part of a collection which is in a in a, in a book a printed book which uses as um, as a common element in all the designs this uh, chevron pattern motif basically but it has it has uh, sweaters and a hat and scarves and stuff so it's very it's very thorough if I may if I can say it like that basically you find everything with that chevron line pattern thing the idea is, it's all different designers, but they have that common element which goes as a... Oh god, today today is a difficult day. I was very confused in French and now in English I need to... Uh, I have trouble finding words. I'm so sorry. Anyway, that's the common element among, among all the designs. 
this one is uh, it's a very interesting construction because it's um, it's knit sideways basically it's knit flat and then you will pick up stitches at the crown and and close it well you will make a seam and close it by picking up stitches on top it's not my favorite shape for hats it's it's better if i wear it a bit more to the back but then my forehead is cold <laughs> i might add a pom-pom behind to uh, add a bit of weight but i'm not so sure yet um, I used Soft Fingering Yarn by uh, Imogen Big Bad Yarns. The, the colorway is called Caillou Dans le Ciel. It's, uh, it's like pebbles in the sky. And I like the, all the, the variations in the color. I used a Kitchener stitch to finish it, to, to, to make the seam, because you basically... The, the, the cast on is a provisional cast on, and then you, you pick up the stitches and, uh, and make, make a grafting or a seam between the beginning and the end of your of your knitting and the kitchener stitch made a really really clean seam i often can't remember can, can't see which which is the beginning and which where is the end basically inside the seam is very clean as well i don't think i've ever had such a clean seam actually <laughs> very proud of myself i'll admit that's my first my first finished hat i will say that it took me much longer than it should have to to finish because um, it's knit with short rows and I don't really actually like short rows that much so it took me like two weeks to make one rep repetition of the motif and then and then one day to finish the rest so it's bad I know the second finished object is also a hat as I was saying it's the Kobuk hat by Caitlin Hunter I made it without the, the bubbles all around because as much as I like them on the shawl, I wouldn't want them on my head. I actually made two of the this in the last uh, weeks for a very simple reason. For the first one, I, f I forgot to make one repetition for the body, for the main part of the hat, and it was very fitted, you know, like that. And that's absolutely not what I wanted. I wanted something which was slightly slouchy. So I'm, I made it again, I made a second one, and I offered the other one to my uh, goddaughter whose head is slightly smaller than mine, so it really fits her much better. Uh, I used leftovers from my Secret sweater, which I made earlier in the year. So it's yarn from Lena Mouré, her Aphrodite and uh, Orphée bases. It's cashmere silk, I think it's merino cashmere silk and then mohair and silk. And uh, it's very, very soft and very warm, and I really like that halo, you know? The yarn, again, was very pleasant to knit with. Although, I will be honest and I will say that I did not really enjoy knitting the pattern itself. That's uh, probably why I messed up on the first hat, because the um, because I was annoyed <laughs> by, the, by the pattern and I didn't want to be bothered any longer than I needed to. But anyway, I, um, I had planned on making changes and adding ridges over the mountains there. But when I when I saw how they were made and how annoying it was <laughs> to make them, I changed my plans and I decided to go just for the simplest version. It is very pretty, but um, I think my yarn was a bit too slippery for the cables to be pleasant to knit. I'm not a huge fan of cables in the first place, and and with with slippery yarn like that, it was annoying because normally you can. It's just one stitch. It, well, it's just like two stitches for the cables and normally you shouldn't have to use a cable needle it was so slippery that it just wasn't holding well so i had to use a cable needle and it was annoying i'm not sure i will add a pom-pom on this because i like having pom-poms which actually use the same yarn as the hat and i'm not so sure if it would look so nice with the combination i used and it looks fine this way in my opinion so i might just leave it like that Give me, give, well, give me your opinion on that. Should I, sh would you add a pom-pom if you were in my place or would you just leave it like that? Let me know. The last hat, but not the least, which I finished lately, is a Christmas hat. The pattern is called Yol by um, Tori Seierstadt. I'm sorry if I, if I butcher the name. It's color work. I used uh, Jamieson's of Shetland double knitting yarn for that. And I think I did quite well. 
No, I will be honest, it's by far not perfect. Some of the stitches, particularly here, are very irregular because I had some trouble keeping the, te the right tension or keeping a tension regular along those long lines of white. So they're not there. See, I think you can already see it there. It's not, it's not really clean. It annoys me a bit, but then, tant pis, too bad, as we say. I added some difficulty as well because these hearts here, which look pretty ugly as well, uh, <laughs> are normally the same color as the as the as the reindeers. But I wanted to add a bit of a reminder of the waves. The colors I used are eclipse. Uh, mustard and white and I made it twice again the first time I went up here basically uh, yeah up here and I tried it on and my head barely fit inside so I decided to just rip it off and start again in a bigger needle size I used a size three and a half and four and a half instead of three and four for the the edge and the and the, for the brim and the body and it's much better. It was still a bit tight when I um, finished it, but it got much better with the blocking. I like how regular my floats are. Mostly, mostly I just knot the yarn <laughs> inside. Uh, instead of, of really, really weaving in the ends, I thought, ah, can't be bothered. <laughs> so I <laughs> finished it that way. But I still, I still really like it. And honestly, I'm the only one seeing the inside. And yeah. On the, on the same note, I don't think anyone will remark on the fact that my stitches are not perfect, you know. So it's the first time that I use, that I, that I make such a, pr a project with um, with yarn that thick in, in such a detail, uh, detailed pattern. So I'm, I'm still quite happy about it. But anyway, I will add a pom-pom, but I'm not so sure on the color yet. If I should make it all blue or blue and white or blue and yellow. Let me know what you think if I should, if I, maybe I should, you think I should leave it like that and not add a pom-pom, but I think it would really look nice with one. So let me know which colors you think I should use. I still have enough to make full pom-poms with just, with just one color um, in case. I used over, over a, uh, full ball of, of the blue and less than one of the white and the yellow. That's it for my finished objects. We can go on with the works in progress and I will start with the biggest one, which is also the one I started um, longer ago. It's the Mr. Rochester sweater by uh, Alice Hammer. As you can see, I passed the armhole and I'm on to the front up to the shoulders well i should i think i'm almost done with this part and i will um, i will start with the neck shaping and the shoulders afterwards i'm using black eye yarn uh, svart balls bfl which i bought at inverness and i really like it it's um it has a really really excellent stitch definition and it really shows off the the pattern very well. It smells super sheepy, which I love. <laughs> it's a pleasure to knit with. Really, it's not scratchy on the fingers because sometimes it can happen that they, even if the yarn is not scratchy or itchy, it can be a bit irritating on the finger when you knit. And this one is not at all. And I know because she showed me when when I was in Inverness, Judy, the owner of Black Eye Yarns, that uh, it will really soften when it's washed and blocked. So I'm looking forward to it. I had trouble with this one with the the swatch because I had way too many stitches uh, compared to what was required. But I asked Alice, the designer, and she said that she is a very loose knitter, so it's normal. So I went, um, I went up a full needle size for the for the ribbing at the bottom and for the body itself. So I'm knitting it with size five millimeter needles. And so far, so good. I'm really happy about it. I put it to the side a bit to get some fresh air, let's say, um, from it because it is a big project and I know that it's going to take quite some time. So I needed some distraction and I made. Uh, these hats in the meantime, but the, since they are done now, I can go back to it and hopefully finish it by the end of the month. Hopefully, but I have I have a couple of 
Christmas presents to knit in the meantime so I'm not putting myself uh, I'm not I'm not putting a hot deadline on that one the other working progress I have is the Trondheim mitts, uh, mittens by uh, Pia Kamagon it's very pretty but it's very hard not the Latvian braid which is much easier than it seems but this part here because the the, the cuff actually has three colors on one row and and it's difficult <laughs> I I'm not I'm trying to knit them on on circle or on on nine inches needles instead of um, of using magic loop. It's a first. Normally I use magic loop for mittens and stuff like that, but I decided to try it. Maybe that's also why it's harder to keep the three colors together. I don't know. I bought the yarn from. Uh, Patricia Nitography, P Fortune. It's Rama 2 ply uh, Gamel Serie and it's very nice to knit with. Can't tell you that much uh, about it for now because I'm not very far in the project, but I will tell you more as soon as I gather up the courage and, and go on with them. But I have to admit that the, the three colors on one row, um, they're a bit, let's say, they're a bit tiring. So I'm, I'm taking it slow with these. <laughs> The next and last work in progress which I have is a new shawl. It's the Jacinta shawl by uh, Amber O'Brien. I have started it yesterday or two days ago. But yeah, yeah, I don't remember exactly when, but very recently, so I'm only at the beginning. But so far so good, it looks really nice. I'm knitting it with this 200 gram cake of uh, Merino Nylon Yarn by La Féfile. The shade is called Coucher de Soleil, that's a sunset. I saw her knitting it and I thought it looked really, really beautiful. It's the kind of impulse buy which I'm trying to avoid now because I love the yarn, it looks gorgeous, but it's not something that I would wear actually. It's just not my colors, not what I'm used to. I'm pretty sure I will offer it in the end because I, will, I wouldn't wear it. Sorry, it's pretty warm in here, even though the heating has been um, off for two days, two or three days. No heating and no hot water. <laughs> uh, it happens, but of course it happens on weekends or end of weeks and it's not fixed directly. But anyway, I was telling you about this. Um, the pattern is, is designed originally for gradients, so I don't have to worry about changing colors and, and alternating skeins and stuff or adapting anything so that it works with a gradient or so that, and I already know that it will look good with one. Yeah, I've started out in the yellow and I will progress through the color. I think it will be a pretty long project because it's uh, 800 me it's over 800 meters and um, as soon as there are more repeats of the pattern, it's going, probably going to <laughs> take much longer to uh, finish at least one row. So, so far I really like the color and the pattern, so I'm good. That's it with the works themselves. I wanted to thank you for um, the feedback about the previous episode and with particularly the part with Jaime. We had a lot of fun making it and uh, we're considering um, doing it again actually, but we need to find the right occasion for that. There's also uh, a lot of participants in the uh, Christmas call, which I'm organizing to knit Christmas knit or crochet Christmas presents. It takes place in my rivalry group and uh, there are almost 50 participants so far, which is really nice. You still have uh, a bit more than three weeks to knit your Christmas presents. So please don't hesitate to take part. There are some really, really nice prizes. It's open um, prizes. It's open internationally and, um, and yeah, you're all welcome there. Um, I will not, um, I will not tell you about um, the two craft fairs, festivals, which I attended this week. Uh, well, not not that much at least. I Well, I won't show you what I bought at first because it stayed very reasonable and at second because I think it would be more interesting for me to show you once I've actually used what I bought. I bought a little bit of, of yarn, I bought a bit of, well, a couple of patterns and some, some um, fabric for it well, to make them. And I think it will just be more interesting for you to actually see, well, have my feedback on, on, the, on the stuff once I've used it and once I've made something with it. 
it's I'm, I'm not a huge fan of holes and yeah that's not what i prefer in watching podcasts so i'm making a basically i'm making a podcast which i would like to watch so i don't really see the point in in showing off what I, what i purchased unless it's like exceptional or very specific like last time when i told you about the black eyed yarns skeins which i bought at inverness but yeah it's just i will i will tell you more once i've started started using the, the stuff I can tell you that both festivals were very nice in very different um, aspects because the CSF is much bigger. It's more general. It has it has uh, all sorts of, of crafts, not only uh, uh, fiber arts. Also has scrapbooking and stuff like that. Um, it it's huge. There are a lot of people, so if you are afraid of of uh, mobs, uh, that's probably a place you should avoid, or come very early or late in the day. But um, there are always very nice things to see, so and and people to meet and everything. The other, La Grande Mercerie, is uh, is more focused on on small businesses, and so it's mostly people whom you don't necessarily see at bigger craft fair craft fairs. Um, if only because a spot at a craft fair costs a lot of money, but uh, particularly at one of the big ones like, like the CSF or the AEF in February. But they're also they really have a focus on ethical brands and and um, environment environmentally friendly brands. So it's it's a very different kind of of fair, but it's also really nice. It was it was re super cool to see um, to see friends and and also strangers. Thank you for coming and saying hi. It's always highly appreciated. Um, as I said on Instagram, I don't bite, and even if I'm with other people, you can still come over and tap me on the shoulder and say hi. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to meet all of you. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Um, well, there there is one more thing which I wanted to uh, to tell you. It's I don't know I. The, the word conundrum sounds a bit dramatic, but I'm I'm not so sure if it makes sense for me to go on making the French and the English episodes every time. I have some, but very little feedback in the and well for the English episodes, and the the view count is basically ridiculous if you compare both. So I I don't know if if it makes sense for me to um, to actually still put all that time and effort into making uh, both languages or if I should just stick to only French. If you are well, it's not it's not about it's not about um, attention seeking or, or or trying to bait you into commenting or something. It's just that I want to know if what I'm doing actually brings you something. Most people who've told me they've watched my English episode are actually French people who watch them to improve their English. So they watch both, which is really, really commendable. But uh, I don't I'm not so sure I would do it myself. It's it's really nice, but I don't know. It's 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 a lot of time and effort. So let, let me know if if you think it's if you actually watch it, watch them and enjoy them and and uh, and if it makes sense to you or if you would be okay with just a French episode with maybe English subtitles I don't know let me know I hope that you will that you will give me your your uh, opinions and ideas on that yeah that's the end of this episode I hope you enjoyed it if you did please like comment share subscribe if you haven't already I wish you a very very nice advent time a very nice beginning of December in case you're not actually celebrating Christmas I will see you very soon or much sooner at least <laughs> I have only two weeks I'm going back to work on Monday and then I will be on vacation two weeks after so I should have some time to film an episode before Christmas have a lovely time enjoy your knitting your crocheting your your crafting in general and um, see you very soon take good care bye